So today we are going to take this poor innocent EMG pickup, rip it down, see what's underneath the hood and see if we can get it to fit into a different sized route. Let's get at it. So welcome to the unofficial episode one of a series called Chop Shop, where we're going to do different modifications, experiments, things like that. Uh, you know, modifying necks, adding zero frets, stuff like that. So hit that subscribe if you want to catch some other mods and things that will be coming up. But our first one is we're going to see about tearing down this EMG pickup. Now, why would you want to do something like that? Well, even on the manufacturer's site, they do not recommend this and say you'll probably destroy your pickup which pretty good chance of it. But I've looked at the schematics and I think there's a pretty good educated guess that we can get away with a few things here. So the first question is, why do we want to do this? One is, if you're like me, you're insane. You always have to screw around with things. But the main part being is that this is what's called a soap bar shape pickup. Uh, this fits into a very specific route. I've been playing a couple of Ibanez bases recently that fit into what's called a nicknamed candy bar shape, which is a slightly slimmer route. So to fit this in, this usually means I've got to route out my base. I don't want to do it particularly, and I want to see, can I actually alter the pickup? So the patient on the table is going to be this lovely Ibanez five string base. We're going to yank the original Bartolini pickups that are in the slimmer space and see if we can fit this EMG pickup into it. So when I measure this out, basically what it looks like is there's this lip that goes around that is the casing. If I can whittle this down from the casing and just a little bit further into what is epoxied out here, I think I can get away with squeezing this into the route. There will be some opening on either sides, but, you know, we're, uh, we're experimenting and nothing's going to be perfect. So the objective is basically to see if I can rip down the sides on this and dig into the pickup a bit without ruining it or removing the shielding. Now, this is going to be a different motivation than a lot of times why you might see a guitar player do this. I've seen a couple of guys try and rip down their guitar humbuckers, and it's usually that they want to get the entire plastic casing off to put like a metal cover on it or, you know, something like that, kind of recover the, uh, the pickup. I've seen a couple people do it successful. I've also seen a couple people absolutely destroy the pickup in the process. There's a real good chance of it. So with that in mind, this YouTube channel accepts no responsibility for anyone who ruins their pickup trying to repeat this experiment or finds out that the source of their horrible tone has nothing to do with their pickup. So when I first went at this, I used a Dremel tool like this. I had a barrel sand on it, and that didn't work out so great. Uh, basically, all that happened was, because you have a small diameter on here, you, you have to run it pretty quickly to actually get in and do some damage and stuff. And what it wound up doing is just melting the plastic. It started to kind of gum up and turn into this gooey pile that then I had to scrape off anyway. So I don't recommend the Dremel tool. Uh, if you run it slow enough that the plastic doesn't melt, it's going to take 900 years anyway. So I went looking for some other alternatives. What wound up working? A barrel sander. If you're not familiar, sometimes they're called a spindle sander, but this actually worked out really well because it has a much larger diameter. I could do larger cuts. I could keep straight lines going better and I could start ripping it down. So as I'm doing it, I'm able to keep a better eye on what's going on. The plastic isn't melting. And basically I did complete strokes back and forth on both sides, measuring it here and there as I went along, trying to make sure that I was taking the same amount off of either side and also making sure components weren't starting to break through or I wasn't destroying the entire shielding. So that's the first thing you really need to look for is that we want to make sure that we're not hitting things as we're going through and we're making an educated guess as to how much further we can go. So the first thing I noticed was this. At a certain point, we had a break in there and you can see the white line at the bottom. That's the base plate here. And it's what everything's mounted onto, if you're familiar with pickup construction at all. 
and I realized first I thought ah, I'm already on to something. And then once I realized kind of what I was dealing with, I realized there is some shielding that's going to be touching this too. So I've got to be very, very careful at this point, but it didn't scare me off of doing a little bit more. So beyond that, if you can tell right over this section here, there's another component. Let's see if we can get that in focus. That I, as soon as I started to see that, I realized I was probably going to be going into uh, where the initial shielding is and that type of thing. And I'm also, again, making kind of an educated guess because I know with a P pickup and this one, you're going to have this side has one coil and this one has the other. So I have to be a little more co concerned with what I start to see immediately here and here because these spots on here are basically going to be empty. But I don't know if they have their shielding wrapped around a larger spool, that type of thing. So we had to be careful with it. But eventually I did get it down to this size. I haven't finished cleaning it up and things. But uh, so it's pretty rough. But I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And I think what I'm also going to do is just go for broke. I'm going to grab one more. And because I love you guys so much, I'm going to sacrifice one more of my precious EMGs and see if I can get this down to candy bar shape. We're going to pop it into this Ibanez, see what happens. And do they still work? Or do I have some rather expensive paperweights here? Let's see what happens. All right. The moment of truth. I've done a quick and sloppy job of just tossing these in here real quick so we can see if we have function and all that kind of good stuff. And needless to say, if they were going to go in permanent, you know, I'd tighten things up a little bit and uh, clean them up a little bit and get some uh, level foam, you know, give it the full treatment. But let's see, did we wind up with the DOA or are we good to go? We have success. So we were actually able to grind down the outsides of the pickup. Uh, and even though there is that problem of EMG using that black goop in there, so you can't really see what you're hitting until you actually hit it. Uh, with a little bit of an educated guess, I was able to slim these down and get them into the size of these smaller routes. So depending on my project, uh, this may be the route I go on a couple of things. So let's kind of wrap this up and see what conclusions we can draw and whether this experiment is the right way to go for you or not. Now, for a lot of guys who, like we talked about earlier, would do this on like a guitar humbucker, I'm not sure if the need for that would really qualify uh, because basically that pickup inside of its housing is pretty close to the outside. You're really going to be screeching the outside of the edge there, trying to get just the plastic casing out. And the only thing you're really going to be able to do is replace the housing with like a metal one or something. And in that case, I feel like I would just buy one, you know, with the Metalworks housing or something that I want. In a case like this, I actually think you probably, in most cases, be better served by routing the base. The reason I say that is because companies like Bartolini, Nordstrand, things like that, actually make their pickups in both the slimmer shape and the EMG size soap bar. So by routing the base to accommodate the EMG, you're going to actually be able to go in between any of them. Uh, it's, you know, a bit more of a risk if you don't know what you're doing with that. But, you know, if you're going to do that and you're not experienced with a router or something, definitely go to a luthier or something. But by expanding that, you actually expand your options. Now, where this comes into play being an advantage is, say it's a base that you're not sure if you're going to keep it or maybe it's something you're just experimenting with and you're looking at reselling it down the road, that type of thing, or there's, for whatever reason, you just don't want to alter the base, or you're just worried about it, then this becomes an option. Again, you know, I had a pretty good educated guess. I've worked on pickups before. I've got a lot of understanding and information going in. So if you wreck it, don't blame your old Uncle Rodney. He did warn you. But 
I do think it's kind of a cool thing knowing that there is the option that ripping down the sides of these, and if you go basically just getting that outer plastic housing off and maybe just a tiny bit into the epoxy, you can fit the EMG soap bar into the candy bar sized uh, Bartolini and Nordstrand style housing. So we learned something today. So that brings a little bit of extra stuff you can do into it. And again, maybe you're just using an Ibanez for a while or a different base that has that type of thing and you want to stick your favorite pickups in there, but you know it's not a long-term solution. Either way, this was a fun experiment. It was cool to be able to rip off the cover and finally just see what's in there and see how much it's really soaked in there and a little bit about the construction of the pickup. So let me know what you think. Is this something you think that you might wind up doing against my advice, of course, or would you take a different route to doing this? And does this change maybe your thoughts about a base you might buy or something knowing that you can get one of these in here? Again, the cleanup to me is going to be the big thing about really getting it tight and smooth and getting it looking good again. Because you could also really make it look choppy and crappy. And once you do, there's not a lot of going back. So let me know about that down in the comments. It'll be an interesting conversation. Let me know what other base modifications, stuff like that, you might want to see here on Chop Shop. And also, I'd like to get kind of maybe a poll or a vote going. Which would you rather do or which do you think you would do in this case? Try and whittle down the pickup or route into the body. Definitely looking forward to that. As always, I will see you below in the comments. Like, subscribe, share this if you found it interesting and uh, somebody who knows about pickups who wants to tell me I'm an idiot, which is always an option. So with that, I'm going to sign off of this one. I'll see you below in the comments. Thanks for watching.